Well, hello guys, my name is Nick and welcome to this magnificent Tonka Bulldozer. It's rusty, it's gone, it's complete luckily because I was uh, not really sure because there are two holes on the side. But it is complete as far as I can tell and it is the perfect restoration project. I cannot believe I finally am doing a Tonka Bulldozer truck. In a couple of next weeks I'm going to do a Tonka truck, so make sure you look forward to that. I always wanted to do a Tonka vehicle, but they would always order my price range or I just couldn't find any. So, first of all, I need to reassemble the model, starting with the little scoopity scoop on the front. Now, there is one rivet holding everything in, so I just have to drill that out. Then I started figuring that the actual rivet is uh, spinning with the drill bit. So, then I took my handy dandy screwdriver after that and pry it open on the rivet until it would release. So there I'm taking my handy dandy screwdriver, almost stabbing myself and then it just snaps and the rivet comes right off. After that I just have to release both sides and the little implement of the bulldozer just comes right off. Ready for the sand blaster. Now for the rest of the reas uh, the dis not reassembly, we're not that far yet, of the disassembly. First the tracks come off and then we have to take out the centerpiece that's been held in by two rivets. Just drill them out and they just fly right through. Just like that and no damage done. Oh, I drilled in my table. Nobody noticed though. No. <laughs> There's no damage to my table, not at all. <laughs> So to take the rest apart, you just have to pry open the yellow sides and the base will just come right off. Afterwards, I figured that, well, the wheels weren't attached, they were just being held in by the yellow body. So they just fell out and I, I, I have everything, I promise. <laughs> Next is my favorite part of every restoration, to take a look at the model. Well, all disassembled and then go to the sand blasting cabinet. I think my favorite, not my favorite, my best investment I've made for the channel so far. Now, normally it takes about one or two minutes to do one model because this is a rustier model. It has some corrosion on it, it has old paint. It didn't really come up in two minutes, so I speeded up the process. I think it took about five or six minutes. I didn't even record everything because there were still a couple parts that were just held, holding on. I did not remove the paint from the inside of the model because you won't ever see it. I know it, I always say, I, I know it's there so it would drive me crazy, but I spent about 5 minutes on the inside and it just wasn't coming off the paint. So as you can see, the paint is coming off really really slowly, so I'm gonna cut off right here and let Nick in the past just figure it out on its own. So, all the black didn't come off, but no worries, I'm going to paint it in primer, then sand it off all smooth, and then you shouldn't be able to see anything from it. Now, there are still some paint speckles left on the outside that I need to take off before I go to the primer step. So, I take my piece of sanding paper, and I take my dental pick to remove all and every piece of paint that's still on the outside that will ruin my pretty new paint shop. Next, it's on to the uh, bending everything back into place because there were a couple of bent things and this is the ideal time when it's not painted to bend everything back straight. Next step is the primer. For primer, I'm using a fine surface primer by Tamiya. Normally, I would do it on my thingamajig, but there is no place, so chuck it away off camera and then I just have to hold I guess while I primer. So I decided to do the inside first and when that dries I can grab it from the inside to paint the outside of the car. Sounds like a pretty good plan to me. So again I know there's still yellow paint on the inside of the car but you won't see it when the interior goes back into the car. Next, when the inside of the car and my glove is painted, I decide to also paint the little tracks on the car. So when that dries, I can just blend in the rest of the paint. And just like that. Next, oh, I missed a spot, that's not good. 
And it's all done for now. Next, I take my uh, deploy on the front and give that two coats of primer, leaving between 15 to 20 minutes to dry between coats. At the moment, I'm holding it by the piece that's going to be inside the car, so it doesn't really matter if that's not 100% painted, but I will try to paint every single part of that, obviously, but there's just no place to hold it. Next, we go on to the, uh, the I, I, all, uh, off camera, I sanded the, sanded the deploy on the front and now it's getting its final coat of primer and you can see the black underneath it. Next, go back to the body itself and blend in the old dried primer with the new primer so I get a nice and even finish and I can actually hold the model by one of the tracks. When that is over, it's time to put the color on. Now, I used a can of black from the dollar store, well, the action, because, well, we don't have dollar stores in uh, Belgium, just to put it uh, back to a black, and it looks pretty amazing. It's a high gloss black, so it will really shine until it gets used the first time, it's, well, it will be destroyed. Because it's a work vehicle, it's, it should go back to the... to work. <laughs> No idea what I'm saying, I've been recording all day and I'm kind of losing my mind. But I read the comments on the previous videos and nobody really minds that I'm losing my mind. It's all fun and games. Next, let's go back to my airbrush. Put in the yellow paint and paint the model back to its original Tonka Yellow. It's not the original Tonka Yellow, it's just yellow because I don't really know the original yellow, if there is even an original yellow color. This is a Tamiya Bright Yellow. Next to the interior engine, base, grill, tow hook, everything that's on this car is in one. Take my toothbrush, take some hot soapy water and brush off every bit of dirt so it can be painted. Yes, I'm going to paint, not everything, I'm going to paint the engine, but the paint will actually stick to the model instead of to the dirt. When that is all clean, I take my can of my silver chromish paint and my paintbrush. Also, took my toothpick just in case because it doesn't want, I don't want to have it feel left out, obviously. And paint in the front grille, those four bars. When that's all nice and chromed, I do the engine from every side. And I was going to detail it even more, but I just love the way the, the chrome paint looked on my engine. So I decided to just leave it like this, because in my opinion it looks really good, and if the model is uh, assembled all the way, it just looks, well it just looks the part, it is so good. I even painted in the front of the engine, but nobody will ever see. Next I do the three gauges, and then back to my toothbrush. Now the wheels are quite dirty, I didn't really notice at first, but as you can see the water is turning browner and browner and browner the more wheels I do. So they're quite dirty. Then the wheels, the axles, quite rusty, so a little bit of sanding paper, get them back into shape. Now for the reassembly. First let's put, put on one of the wheels on the axles and put the axle on the other side. And do the same with the front axle. Being really careful not to drop any wheels because um, off camera there is a drop on every side. And if it drops to three of the four sides I will never be able to find it. Next, to place on the body again, just have to pull apart the two yellow tracks and it will just slide over. Next, for the hardware, I obviously cannot reuse rivets and I don't have a rivet gun, so I decided to go with some small screws and um, I kind of sort, they were a lot longer, I shortened them myself, so I got some screws, weeded the threads, and also put some nuts on the other side. Now, this is me actually. I need to keep talking because this is me actually failing putting in a small thing in the hole. Which isn't that hard, but apparently it is for past Nick. Well, he's always a little bit slow, you know. So when the little thing is in the hole, I take the nut and just screw it on there. And do that same process on both sides. When that is done and all tied it up, I take the tracks and just slide them back over. Totally covering up the ugly nuts from the uh, way I attached the body to the base. I was kind of... I, I, I didn't really know how this will turn out because, well, they were originally rivets, totally invisible. But it turned out really well, if I do say so myself. Next, when that is all done, I take the little plow on the front. 
slide in the one side I was actually I was holding to paint. I did get it painted afterwards, so it's all good. And get in the other side. Then I take my final shortened screw and nuts, and also get that back into order. So this is all done and it's just loose enough to make it all still work. This was such a fun project and I can't wait to dig in the Tonka truck that I have sitting around right here, which this bulldozer actually can fit on. So this is the car before the restoration when it was still rusty, dusty and really, really dirty. And again, I just, and it was all bent. You can see everything is bent. The tracks aren't really on and it would scrape against the body. And here it is after the restoration, all shined and pretty up. You can kind of see the screw if you look to the side, but I just love the way this turned out. If you did too, please leave a like, subscribe, and hope to see you in a future video. Bye.